This is the Samsung S23 Ultra, the update to one of the most popular phones of 2022. Is this going to be one of the top phones of 2023? Let's have a look. Launched alongside the Galaxy S23 and the S23 Plus, this is Samsung's new flagship phone. The Galaxy S23 Ultra offers top level performance. It's slick and it's fast. It has a fantastic display and the camera, whoa. The cameras really deliver and we'll deep dive into those later on in the video. Now, I'm usually a pro Apple user. However, my second phone has always been an Android. And this is the first time I've actually considered my main phone to be an Android. It's certainly not a cheap phone, but it can prove itself as one of the best phones of 2023. First thing you're going to notice is how the phone looks and unless you have them side by side you're going to say it looks identical to the S22 Ultra. You'd really struggle to tell the subtle differences between the two which are basically matched in terms of design and build. The packaging is 100% recycled and the plastics come from PET bottles and it doesn't stop there. The glass and all the aluminium is recycled too. Samsung is looking to really boost those eco credentials with this phone. With minimal packaging, a USB cable and the SIM tray removal tool is pretty much all you get with this device. The phone is still constructed with an aluminium body with a glass back and curves towards the edges leaving you with an almost flat surface on both sides. There's no avoiding this as well. It's a big phone. However, one-handed use can be a little tricky. Those of you like me have slightly bigger hands. This phone seems quite comfy to use, but those corners can still be quite a stretch. It boosts stereo speakers supporting Dolby Atmos, and you'll be forgiven if you miss the left speaker since it's just a little dot on the top of the phone. The right of the speaker sits on the bottom of the display. It has a 6.8 inch dynamic AMO LED. It's running 3080 by 1440 pixels at 500 pixels per inch, running at an adaptive variable rate of up to 120 hertz. Visually, the phone looks identical to its predecessor. However, just because this phone uses the same display, it doesn't mean it's a bad one. In fact, this display has the same QHD plus resolution and adaptive refresh rate of up to 120 hertz, as I mentioned earlier. And it's a bright, clear, beautiful screen. One of the first things you notice especially coming from a phone that may be a few years old. It's one of the best displays I've seen on a smartphone. Being able to use it, no matter the condition outside, the vibrance and saturation are almost spot on. You get great viewing angles and the adaptive brightness seems to be good too. Although, since it's a new phone, I've not been able to test it out in the summer sun yet since in the UK we're still very cloudy. The HDR on this phone is spectacular and if you have a choice of devices to choose from, this is probably the device you're going to watch from. Now, for the real difference between this and its predecessor, the big change here is the move to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. This is the latest hardware from Qualcomm that's powering a number of flagship devices, but this one has been specifically optimized for Samsung phones with a faster clock speed and boosted GPU performance. It really is silky smooth and a pleasure to use. Now, we've spoken about how good this is when consuming content. How about something a bit more interactive? I fired up some games and the experience was great. Graphically, it looks great. It doesn't get hot, even on charge. It may be a little bit warm. And I didn't see a single lag or jitter while testing but consider your mileage may vary depending on the time and what game, how long you play that game and whether you know direct sunlight and charging, etc. There are so many variables to think about. Thanks to the vapor chamber, this device managed to stay cool after about an hour long session of gaming. The battery life is great. It has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery and it has a 45 watt wired and a 15 watt wireless, making it one of the slower charging devices on the market. But I guess that's for the sake of having to preserve battery life to give some longevity 
or some more longevity out of the phone. The phone got me through most of the day on a 50% charge with light use, but on a full charge, the S23 is good and it will last most people a good day, day and a half. With the exception of power users and gamers, of course, who may need the top up towards the end of the day. Now the camera, it has a two 100 megapixel sensor with an f-stop of 1.7 has optical image stabilization the ultra wide has a 12 megapixel sensor with an f-stop of 2.2 and the telephoto is 10 megapixels with an f-stop of 2.4 it has a 100x space zoom so you can zoom into the moon and take pictures of that while the galaxy s23 ultra remains largely the same as before samsung is playing the marketing towards the megapixels packing in a whopping 200 megapixel sensor while i won't be using the megapixels personally for those who want to scale those images it can be a deal maker if you're looking to utilizing it the default is a reasonable 12 megapixel which is more than enough for most social media shares to reach the higher resolution it combines pixels to create super pixels allowing more light per pixel and i can't wait to get some more in-depth testing and printing with these images so the higher resolution does mean you can crop into the images and get the shots you want without losing quality but looking at the images side by side on the computer you can't see much difference here the phone does have a 3 and 10x zoom which seems like they would be the better option instead of cropping in unless you can't get close enough to your subject although you can get a 6x zoom on the 200 megapixel mode with all of that out of the way, I think this phone delivers one of the best cameras you'll find on a smartphone. The main camera is excellent in normal conditions. However, I do want to deep dive into different shooting conditions later. For those of you wanting to dig a little deeper into the camera, you can select RAW and Pro options right out of the box. This means you don't have to worry about any third party apps to do so. While the screen is big enough for you to edit, you'd probably want to move them to a computer to do so unless you're doing minor touch-ups or doing something on the go and you want to post something up to social media. The telephoto performance is great. I'd suggest using a tripod to do so as it can be hard capturing your shot, especially with a moving target. The camera does occasionally delay, which can make you miss your shot, but I couldn't find any consistency with this, so it's something to be cautious about. Much of Samsung's push on the S23 series has been around night mode. I was pleasantly surprised to see the result with little light, however, I will be doing some more tests on this later. I tested the main camera and the front facing camera and both performed very well in low light. I didn't have to do anything else other than that to point and shoot. If you are in a dark spot, you don't have to faff around with all the settings. It just picks it up automatically. Video has been the biggest improvement for me. And what sets this phone apart in my view? Stabilization. Stabilization is great. We can see here I wasn't trying to hold it steady. It records up to 8K30. Now holding it walking seems very stable indeed. Bearing in mind that I've got a big gimbal and camera rig that I'm trying to counterbalance on my other arm. Hello. Hello. I go to I as well. Today I'm just going to be um because we're looking at the horses. Okay. Do that park over there, but. I didn't realise you can feed the horses from here. Okay, let's go feed the horses. Yeah. Run. Overall, I'm impressed. And as I said earlier, this is the first time an Android phone has tempted me away from the King's Apple. The phone and the camera features are so versatile and it seems to have hit the requirements that most people who are looking for a top of the range phone will need. So what's the verdict? Let's have a look at the pros. The display is fantastic. The camera is impressive in all modes. It's got fast and fluid performance and it has good build quality. Let's look at some of the cons. Some of the software changes are typical Android-y changes. 
charging could have been faster. It's an expensive phone. The caveat is Samsung are running some great offers, especially with trade-ins where you can get in the UK up to £650 back or off for your trade-in, as well as an additional, I think it was £300 voucher at the moment. I'm not sure if that's still going on by the time you watch this video. On face value, there doesn't seem to be much in terms of changes from its predecessor, but the improved boost in camera performance and boosted processing power build on what was a great phone before. Phone's overall design and improvement warrant a strong package, and that's one of the best devices of the year, at least in my opinion. 